Hello everyone. Welcome to the lecture. I hope you are doing well and you are safe. Therefore, I saw that now we have 10 students at lecture on online lecture. And they're uh, joining us one by one, but we we'll start actually. Today is the 7th of September 2020. We are starting the lecture of the course Reinforced Concrete Theory. CIV 481 is the code of the course. And this is in which one? Lecture one. The start. Therefore, let me explain a little, very shortly, about the course. <clears throat> in this course, we will have two assessments, midterm exam and final exam. And also one, hmm, I can say project or I don't know, assignment for you. The midterm exam is something about uh, 30% and 20% for assignment and 50% for final exam. Uh, this course is an applied course. I think why you see double my voice. Let me control that. Students are joining us. Or she has met one by one. We use in this course some topics that I show you in highlighted one. The topics of the lecture of today. Uh, Anyone, can you mute everyone? Because I saw Davila. Oh, perhaps I can. If I close the, regis, the recording here, what will happen? I, yes. Now again is double. Why is double? Let me check again. We have here no registration. Let me close one of these two. Doesn't change anything. Let me check. Um, do you hear me now? I think no mute. Chat, if you hear me, please chat. In the chat, could write something. Do you hear me? Dear student, do you hear me? Yes, professor, I can hear you. Thank you very much. Okay, now it's working now. Let's continue. Therefore, the topics of our lecture today, first we see one introduction to reinforced concrete structures. And then 
we see flexural analysis of reinforced concrete beams. Different methods. We have WST method, we have UST method. I will explain more. And before starting the introduction, let's see what are the contents of the course. As you can see on the screen, in this course, we see first one introduction, and then flexural analysis of beams, and after that, strength analysis of beams according to ACI code, American Concrete Institute code. That is more valuable, I think, than the other codes. Why? Because they, <clears throat> they spend a lot of money for research. <coughs> because of that, it's valid and we use that. Doesn't mean the other codes are not valid. This is more valid, this is updated. And then at the item four, you can see we see the design of rectangular beams and one-way slabs. In chapter five, we see analysis and design of T-beams and doubly reinforced beams. In chapter six, we review very shortly the serviceability in reinforced concrete structures. Again, in chapter seven, we review very shortly because it's given in the code, all the details, the bound, development length and the splices for beams and columns. In chapter eight, we, see, we will see the shear and diagonal tension. In chapter nine, we see introduction to columns. In chapter 10, we see design of short columns subject to axial load and bending. Why? Because Normally, in the curriculums of the programs, civil engineering programs, there is two reinforced concrete design courses. One, we see everything except the columns. And in uh, course two of this design, we see the design of columns short columns, long columns, P-delta effects, and also the slabs and foundation, etc. But here, just we have one course for uh, reinforced design, reinforced concrete design, and the other is, for example, a structural analysis, that is mixture. Some of them, some of them you can see there, or the long, for example, or slender columns, and also for the slabs. Uh, on the foundation, there is another course. You can see the others in the foundation course. But normally, we should see the brief of them in two courses. OK, before starting, let me, let me start Before starting the lecture, let me uh, show you the, uh, for example, the reference book. This is the reference book that we use. The name of the book is Design of Reinforced Concrete, written by Jack C. McCormack and Russell H. Brown. This is a very good book. I recommend this one to you. Why? Based on my uh, experience more than 40 years on the design of reinforced concrete. Because some books give you the method that is not uh, useful or mix them. Some books, the units are different. 
Some books, they are old. They are a lot of famous books, but they are old. They are not revised. This is updated. This is based on the last edition of the codes, uh, code of ACI. And it has a lot of very nice examples. It has uh, detailed tables and graphs for design. It has everything that it's very useful for you. And is written very, very nicely. And even given some good methods that I mentioned in the course to you, if I recommend you to use that one. <coughs> Okay, what you do? You should buy that. You should pay, I don't know, 250 US dollars. But fortunately, it's available on their website. You can, by searching in the internet, you can find that. If not, I have put some editions that is, I think, uh, nine edition in the USM and you can download that. Therefore, this is the reference book. We know what we will do. We will have midterm exam, final exam, and one assignment. And now let's start to see introduction for concrete and reinforced concrete structures. In the copy that I uploaded on the USM and you can download that, I highlighted some parts that are more related to our lecture and our course. For example, there are a lot of items, but perhaps some of them is not very important for your exams. Therefore, first, you study the highlighted one. Highlighted one doesn't guarantee anything. If you study that one, at least you don't give FF, it's clear, or DD. CC you can get, or for more you can see uh, the other not highlighted one as well. And also, after I solved for you some examples, you see more examples. And also you should solve the problems selected and given in at the end of the chapters. Now, now, concrete and reinforced concrete. You know that concrete is a mixture of sand, gravel, crashed rock, or other aggregate held together in a rock filled mass with a paste of cement and water. Therefore, you have three different parts, main part. One is aggregate, the other is cement and water. Aggregate have the mixture of sand, gravel, and crushed rock, etc. They should have a continuous, for example, uh, combination. All sizes should be, otherwise there is, there is empty inside and the strength radius. Therefore, you have seen in, uh, I think, construction material about concrete, how to find the mixture of that, how to test that, and what are the specification of that. Therefore, I don't repeat them here. And why we use reinforced concrete? Why not only concrete? Because concrete is good enough for compression stress, but is very weak for tension stress. In a beam, in a column, etc., we have, when we have load on that, we have some part, for example, compression, the other part, tension. Therefore, weakness of concrete for tension force us to use reinforcement. What is reinforcement? They are steel bars. Because steel bars are very good in compression in, and also in tension, the strength of 
tension in steel is 100 times better than tension in concrete. Therefore, we use that. And even compression in steel is 10 times better than the tension of concrete. You say the concrete is very good in compression. It means that, it, again, it's 10 times weaker than steel. Steel is better, but it's expensive. Because we wanted to fabricate and construct the cheap construction, use cheap material, we use concrete and reinforced concrete structures. Now let's see the next slide. Now we should compare the reinforced concrete structures and reinforced concrete and steel structures. What is the advantage of reinforced concrete structure? First, you saw that it's cheap. The other very, very important item is the reinforced concrete structures are very good against the fire. They resist very well. But steel structures are weak against fire. If we have 10 hours fire in the building or five hours, we have collapse in the steel structures, total collapse. But in reinforced concrete, it resists, no problem. Why? Because concrete is resistance against the fire. Okay, what is the solution if we have a steel structure? We should not use that? No, we should, for example, uh, cover the steel members by one layer of, I don't know, five centimeters, seven centimeters, 10 centimeters of concrete. We have a steel columns, beam columns, but covered by concrete or other chemical material that is resisting against the fire. Advantage is cheaper is, for example, uh, resistance uh, against the fire. The other thing that I can, it's compatible with the nature. What? Because we have on the earth a lot of sand, gravel, and the other thing, and concrete is something like that. But we added the cement and water. And because the sizes are greater and bigger compared to steel structures, normally you don't feel any problem for the deflections and for movements. And what is the uh, disadvantage of that. First, because it's cheap material, the sizes of the the sizes of the elements, members, is bigger. In a steel structure, perhaps you have 25 by 25 centimeter column, but in a steel it goes to 40 by 40 or 45 to 45. Beams are bigger and the dimensions are bigger. What we should do? Nothing. Sometimes by some changing the design and the dimensions, we hide some uh, faces of concrete in the walls, in the ceiling, etc. But always we have this problem. This advantage of reinforced concrete, the sizes and dimensions of the members are greater than steel. The other one is heavier. When the size increase, the beams, the, I don't know, columns, even slabs, they are increasing. <clears throat> it's heavier. The building is heavier. Okay, heavier is that it imposes one vertical load as dead load 
and also when we have earthquake because earthquake force is proportional to the mass of the building we have uh, more forces on the reinforced concrete structures so because it's heavy it's not good for earthquake it's not good for uh, in designing vertical loads and then the other problems are more or less the same in the steel structure you can control the reflection no no worries about that but you should check everything but in concrete because the dimensions are big sometimes no need for control that or i will tell you in design you apply a minimum thickness for beams no need for control deflection just you control the stress and you design that based on that therefore you can see the more about the advantage and disadvantage of the concrete and reinforced concrete structures one thing that <clears throat> because it's cheap material this is constructed by the people at site or we use the ready made concrete the quality should be controlled by getting samples testing and also perhaps in execution or construction of the concrete at the beginning you see they don't care about the mixture about the <clears throat> temperature of environment etc and then it makes weak we try to apply a little more safety factor on that compared to the steel structures to be guaranteed that no problem we have okay let me show you another part of the lecture that we continue on the by the way i uploaded for you in the on the user two things one full text of the reference book and the other one i prepared a simplified lecture note the main reference book is more than 780 pages but the simplified one that I prepared and uploaded, you can see that there, there is uh, something about 200 pages. And it helps you for your studying. And it shows something that is related to our lecture. Let me change the presentation. Yes, I stopped the presentation and now let me add another one. Can you see the file or not yet? Let me bring in the other. Let me 
again stop sharing and also I share again I hope this time you see the Sometimes we have a problem. I don't know what happened. Can you see the screen that shows the advantage of reinforced concrete things? Yes, I can, doctor. Uh, you can see that, huh? Yes. Okay. Yes, it's visible, professor. Thank you very much. Therefore, here, let me make a little greater, but I don't know why it doesn't show that it my, you can see that. Let me make a little that one bigger. For example, now, I hope it's big enough. Let's make 200. 20 times yes therefore I told you you can yourself please read the advantage and disadvantage that I mainly and shortly explain you in the reference book let's don't put too much time for that the disadvantage I think it's too big now let me make shorter smaller scale yes in close 1.6, article 1.6, you see that compatibility of concrete and steel. What does it mean? They should be compatible? Why? Yes. Imagine that one of you, name of one of you is concrete, one of the other your friend is steel. You should, when you are in a team, you are working together for a project, you should be compatible. What does it mean? For example, in summer, one student says, oh, it's too hot for me and use air condition for very low temperature. The other one doesn't accept that and it uh, makes him sick, for example. The temperature between the people are not the same. In the winter, are the same. Therefore, this is the happens when two people marry together. This is has problem in winter and summer. The temperature are not the same. What about the concrete and steel? Luckily, thank God, the temperature coefficient of steel and concrete are exactly the same. Otherwise, they don't work to each other. In summer, elongation in a steel if they were not the same is more and concrete is less and the steel push and goes out from the concrete and in summer again other problem because the buildings are alive they are not dead the buildings are changing the size every moment by temperature. When you know it's hot, the length of the members increase. When it's cold, the length decrease. Therefore, always we have a movement for to be bigger or smaller. This happens on all materials, on a steel and also concrete. If the temperature coefficient of steel and concrete, they were not the same, we didn't have 
this uh, reinforced concrete. I am repeating, thank God. They are the same. They work together and we can have reinforced concrete buildings. This is one advantage and one thing that you should pay attention. What about the design codes? You know that most of concrete, they have a national code. For example, I don't know, in Jordan, you have the national code, steel or concrete design code. In Syria, in, I don't know, Saudi Arabia, in Turkey, in Iran, in Italy, in France, all they have national codes. But Europe, they go now to Euronorm for all Europe. They wanted to uniform them. And America has his uh, own code. Canada has its own code. India and Russia, everyone has code. But the most important or the most, uh, uh, I don't know, valuable thing can maybe ACI. And why ACI select ACI? If you see the European codes, because the technology for construction is high, they care and control that. And the money is important for them and safety is important for them, they have some course. But American, this safety is important for them and the money is not too much important. Therefore, the sizes is a little bigger compared to the European courts. What about us in our countries, in the Middle East? Yes, money is important for us. Safety is important for us. But unfortunately, the technology and supervision of the construction is not um, paid attention too much. And sometimes we are careless. Because of that, it's better we don't use very optimized code of European. It's better we use the American code that a little, they don't care money, a little. Therefore, we use for the safety and also because lack of technology or control or, I don't know, the habit of control, it's better go to ACI. It's my experience. What is ACI? ACI is American Concrete Institute Code. That it has some numbers. For example, you see that here we use it in a C in the reinforced concrete design. <coughs> ACI 318. <coughs> And you see the uh, dash 11. 11 is the year, 2011. The codes are not changing every year. Minor changes happen during 10 years, 15 years. You know, still that's valid. The other thing that we should review, this is the properties of concrete. You see there are mechanical properties of concrete that we care. Because in design, we should know what is the strength of the concrete. Therefore, first we see compression strength of concrete. For, you know, concrete is like a baby like a very, really, very really little child. When he or she is born or was born, has no power. But when the time pass, it gets power. For example, after, I don't know, nine months, he can walk or one year and then can run. And after 20, 22 years, it's very strong like you, and even can be stronger. Because of that, when we define the 
strength of concrete, we should put a date for that. We define a primacy that is symbol for compressive strength of concrete that I call that characteristic strengths of concrete or specific strengths of concrete is determined by testing to failure of the samples with 28 days old. Therefore, 28 days after casting or puring the concrete, we measure that, we test that, and it is reference for our calculations. What is the sample? The American sample are cylinder. And the size of the cylinder is <coughs> the there it has a cylinder has diameter of six inch and the height of twelve inches. It means the diameter is something about fifteen centimeter and the height is about 30 centimeters. And the form of the sample is cylinder. But you will ask, oh, we saw in, uh, in the lab, we have the cube samples. What is that? The cube samples are used by Turkish. and also by English and some other countries. But the American use the cylinder uh, specimen and it's better for measurement as the viewpoint of continuum mechanic distribution of stress, etc. But anyway, it doesn't care, it doesn't, it's not important. If you test it by cube or cylinder, there are some factors that you convert one together. The strength of this one is how much uh, compared to the other one. Therefore, in ACI, it is tested the cylindrical sample. In this graph, you will see. I don't know why I cannot see what's shared here. Ah, here, here I can see. In this graph, you can see the stress strain curve of concrete. Yes. For different a prime C, a prime C, one KSI, KSI is kilo per square inch, kips per square inch. We have PSI, pound per square inch, and KSI is, KSI is kips or kilo pound per square inch. And for each one is given the values, one kips, two kips, etc. As the age of the concrete increase, the strength increase as well. But it has limitation. Up to 28, it reaches to something about 80% of the maximum strength of that. But it continues up to five years, even increase the strength. But we don't care then, we don't calculate them, we don't consider that. Just we consider the strength of 28 days. What is the form? You see the form is like a parabolic curve. At the beginning, at the beginning of curve, you see that it's like a line. After that, it goes like a quadratic equation and it has a peak. The peak is something about 
and strain of two per thousand or zero two percent two per thousand this is the strain of the peak the stress depends on the age and actually in the monotonic loading not cyclic loading after the maximum we don't consider this one because the strength are reducing and goes to the collapse another item that is important is module of elasticity of the concrete how we measure that, you know, you say the strength are changing, the modular elasticity is changing as well. How we define that? In general, we have two types of modular elasticity. One is tangent method, the other is second method. The second method is when you join the origin of the graph to one point, for example here, and then you join and measure the angle of this curve and tangent of that angle with horizontal give you the modulo elasticity. For concrete, we use second method. Therefore, we need one original and other point. Other point is if the if prime C is maximum, we go to 45% of that one. For example, perhaps some, somewhere here, 45%. And we consider that point, we join that point to the original and we find one line. And we test the slope of this line and say tangent of the slope of this line is modular elasticity. Here first is set 50% and later it correct to 45%. 45 is the exact value. Therefore the initial modulus we have, but it, we don't use that, we use the tangent modulus or second modulus for forty-five percent is tangent, but second is forty-five. Tangent is written about fifty, is above. Okay, how we can find that? Don't worry. The model assist is given by ACI, given as a formula. This is the formula that given by ACI. EC equals WC power 1.5 33 root square of the prime C EC is modulo elasticity of concrete that is defined in PSI pound per square inch WC is the weight of concrete, actually the unit weight of that. And the prime C is the compressive strength of concrete, which is specified at 28 days age, which is expressed expressed in PSI, pound per square inch. Here, you put here. 
Okay, if you have the unit weight of the uh, concrete, if you have the strength, compression strength of concrete, you can calculate the modular elasticity of concrete. As I mentioned you, in the strain stress curve, you should search the modulus, second modulus of concrete at the point with a stress of 0.45 prime C. Okay, you say I don't have the unit weight of concrete, what should I do? Don't worry, the court has considered some, for example, normal weight of concrete, which is about 145 pound per cube feet and applied in the previous formula instead of WC and found a new formula which is independent of WC. We use this formula directly with uh, having a prime C, we can calculate EC. We don't need the unit weight of concrete anymore. Just a strength of concrete. If you have, we have modular elasticity of concrete. The other characteristic of concrete is Poisson's ratio. You have seen the strength of material. Poisson ratio is the strain of the lateral to the axial when you have load in axial. Imagine you have one sample, one member, you have load it in x direction. In x direction, it has some strain. Also, in the y direction, it has another strain. Strain at y direction over strain at x direction give you Poisson ratio. For example, for a rigid material like concrete, it's very different compared to elastic material or elastic material. Therefore, if the concrete is poor, the Poisson ratio is bigger. If it is strong, the Poisson ratio is smaller. You know, the Poisson ratio normally for different strengths, it has a range between 0 0.11 up to 0 0.21. 0.21 is for weak grade concrete and 0.11, which is smaller value, is for highest strength concrete, a stronger concrete. And as a default, if you don't know what is your con the condition of your concrete, you can apply 0 0.16 for Poisson ratio. I think you have experience when you apply that in the surface lab, like SAP, ETABS, and etc. You see that it asks you what is Poisson ratio and it proposes you some default value and you can apply that. The other mechanical property of concrete is the tensile strength of that. I mentioned that concrete is very weak for the tension and stress. And against the tensile force and tensile stresses. 
the tensile strength of concrete varies between 8 to 15 percent of its compressive strength. Imagine if the strength of one concrete is 20, in compression 25, for example, MPI, megapascal, intention is something about two up to three, something like that. And in general, we say 10%. So 8% of between, we say about 10%. Therefore, because of this weakness of the concrete, we use reinforcement. We use a steel instead of the concrete in the zone of tensile stresses. And shear stress is another item that we can see the strength of shear of concrete and how to calculate that in chapter, I think, 8 or later, we can see that. Okay, we said that the concrete is proof <clears throat> because the concrete is proof we use rain, uh, steel. There are two types of steel that are used in the reinforced concrete. Plain or before. Plane are used perhaps for steel ups for shear reinforcement, and you are not allowed to use for main or longitudinal reinforcement. Only for main reinforcement, we should use the form. Deformed or rebar that they have more friction with the concrete when we pull it out. And I remember something about 40 years ago, 35 years or more, 42 years ago, the ACI uh, forbid to use plain reinforcement as main reinforcement. As a steel up, you can use, but as main reinforcement is not allowed. You should not use as well. In the European method, we call the number of the reinforcement for steel bars by the size of diameter. For example, 520 is diameter has diameter of 20 millimeters. 30 has a diameter of 30 millimeters. But in American standard, they have other symbols. They show by numbers. For example, steel number three, number 11, number 10. So the numbers. How they define, they say that <clears throat> the plain round bars are indicated if it is a deformed even we consider the round and a smooth circle by the diameter in fraction of an inch divided by eight for example, as three inches per eight phi or one inch per two phi, etc. When the diameter of the bar is three inches divided by eight, three, three inches divided by eight is something about one centimeter less than because one inch is 2.5 centimeter. 7.5 divided by 8 is something about uh, 1 centimeter or 9 millimeter, for example. Therefore, for a bar with diameter of 3 over 8, 
این چه they call that steel number three for, for steel number three has a diameter of three inches or eight diameter when we say number 11 its diameter is 11 inch divided by 8 it is something about perhaps i don't know 1.4 inches diameter and something about 35 centimeters these are used but for more sizes even they don't use apply over 8 they have tables you can use the table for finding the uh, diameters and also the areas for example as I mentioned for number one to number 11 diameter is exactly for example for first one <clears throat> diameter is three inches over eight if you divide three over eight you will find this value 0 375 and the unit is in inch it is very clear here for number eight if you divide by eight it gives you the diameter one for number seven if you divide seven by eight 0.75 for number 5 5 inches divided by 8 give you 0 0.625 and so on and if you have the diameter for any size for example 8 number 8 the diameter is one inches. You can calculate the area of the silver in a square inches. How? Very uh, direct and very clear. The area of one circle. Pi, pi square over four give you the area. Therefore, these are the area of the, the circle when you have the diameter of that one. You find the area of that. And even in the other part, you see for different sizes. And even it continues here for some bar numbers more than that and again you have diameter and area I don't give you break let's uh, continue if you are not tired and we can finish earlier Therefore, we go to chapter two. Actually, we finish the introduction. I think we have now on the student 14 minus two, 12 students here. Therefore, I saw that perhaps something about 40 student has registered, but in the Google Meet, we have only 12 students now. I don't give you too much material today because we should repeat it again for the other students that come in next lecture. Just in, uh, I will summarize here the methods that we use for analysis of beams. We analyze the beams under the bending moment, we call that flexural analysis. 
And later, you see that we designed the beams under the shear. And fortunately, their duties are different. Under the beams, under the shear, they will need stirrups. The beams under the bending, we need the longitudinal bars. We can separate them. But we see in this chapter, after a short introduction, the different phases of the design. First, when the roads are low, if not too much, we have uncracked a stage. Actually, when we design beams and columns and other members, we don't care. We can have crack in tension because otherwise sizes are very, very big. Because of that, we use a steel. But for water tanks, for reservoirs, we don't like crack. Therefore, we prefer we have uncrack members or we should control and limit the crack for the water tanks and reservoirs. And after that, there is concrete elastic stress that you see in the <clears throat> figure for a section of beam. You see that a steel yet or steel the stress diagram is linear and is not cracked. You see that's linear in tension and compression. And this shows the strain that always we consider that as linear. But stress, when we increase the load, it will become non-linear. But here, it's not too much load. When we increase the load, we see the cracks appears here on the tension zone. And then when we design the beam, we design just for a compression strength of the concrete and we neglect the tension strength of that because it's cracked. There's no strength there. What we should do instead of concrete with this zone we use the reinforcement and we apply reinforcement in the tensile zone. There you see actually some part of the section are used against the compression stress and the compression strength of the uh, concrete is considered. For the other part, which is cracked, we neglect the strength of the tensile concrete. And instead of that, we use just and calculate against this tensile steel. Therefore, we consider and use Fs stress at steel. And here you see the stress at concrete in compression zone. And if you continue, you see that the stress at concrete in the compression concrete will be nonlinear. And we go to the failure. You see, when you increase the load, the compression stress diagram is not linear. It's not a line, a straight line. 
you see that we have a curve here. When you have a curve, nonlinear curve, we say the material is nonlinear. And stress is nonlinear. And if you continue in addition to the crack in the tensile zone, you will see crack in compression zone as well, and it goes to the failure. Never we accept in the design crack in compression zone. In tension zone, partially we accept because we use steel there. This shows one curve that shows moment in terms of curvature. You see the different phases that we say MCR, the moment of crack, when the tensile concrete cracks appear. And then there are different phases. At here, M service approximate service or working load range. Do you remember I told you we consider up to 45% of a prime C strength when we design and use for the velocity as well is this range. And if you increase the load, you see that the reinforcement bar starts yielding. Then the again increase the strength up to a maximum peak that is actual failure. You see failure, you can see that as we say here, but no, because failure here, here, without increasing the load, it goes to the failure because we have decreasing um, path for the care. Okay, let's stop here and we go to the elastic stress design and we introduce to you one modular ratio N that shows the modular elasticity of steel over the modular elasticity of concrete. And it shows somehow that how many times a steel is stronger than concrete. Okay, let's see, do you have any question? If you have any question, please ask. Any question? Ahmed? No, doctor. You are there? Another Ahmed? Ahmed Saeed? Any question? Ahmed Saeed? Where are you? In kitchen? And Parsin? Any question? Only we had one Ahmed. Ahmed Ibrahim was there. Khalid, any question? Khalid? No question, Khalid? Masood, Masood, Isaac. No question? No. <clears throat> Very nice. <laughs> Sharp, you say no. Therefore, no. Mazin, no. Okay. Muhammad, El Dark. 
Yes or no? Muhammad and Dark, I think, is eating lunch now. What about Vanessa? Vanessa? No questions, Doctor. <laughs> Therefore, there is two Vanessa. Ah, one mobile and laptop. Okay. Okay, uh, before uh, leaving, please go to the UZEM and fill the questionnaire because it used, when you fill the questionnaire, it shows your attendance and your participation in the course. For every lecture, I put feedback questionnaires. Please go and fill that. Thank you very much. Here I stop recording here and Okay, thank you, Prof. Thank you, Professor. Have a nice day, please. Thank you, Professor. Have a nice day. You too. Thank you very much. Therefore, let me stop recording in Google Meet.